Hey, I'm Alex Nizek, and I'm here at the Consumer Reports Auto Test Center in Colchester, Connecticut. And this is the early review for the 2023 Dodge Hornet. We bought a mid-level GT all-wheel drive trim for our test program here at Consumer Reports, and we paid $34,675 with a $1,595 destination fee. We got a couple of options, the most important one probably being the cold weather group, which has heated front seats and a heated steering wheel. Even though this is an all new model for Dodge, technically speaking, underneath the skin, it's really not all that new. So the Hornet is actually built alongside the Alfa Romeo in Italy. And those two cars are based on the existing Jeep Compass. And the Jeep Compass is built on a 20 year old Fiat Punto platform. Considering all that, Dodge is still positioning this as a new vehicle. And they also say it's the sporty option in the compact SUV segment. But how new and sporty is it really? This is the first new vehicle from Dodge in quite a few years. Dodge has found themselves in a little bit of a tricky situation because they've been relying on the Challenger, the Charger, and the Durango, which are high horsepower cars and not that efficient. So they needed a small SUV and something that was gonna get better fuel economy. The best way to think about this vehicle is kind of like a Instagram versus reality situation. It looks kind of interesting. When I was driving it around, people were commenting on it, but the reality is the visibility from inside is terrible and the cargo space is pretty small. From behind the driver's seat, the A-pillars are really wide, and that means you have blind spots at the front right and front left corners that can make it difficult to see at intersections or when merging. And also, Dodge didn't put in a quarter window, which is the small window behind the rear passenger door, which makes it easier to see when looking over your shoulder when turning or merging. The Hornet uses a two liter turbocharged engine, and to make it the sporty option in the segment, Dodge cranked up the horsepower to 268, which is definitely a lot for a small compact crossover. But horsepower does not come for free. According to the EPA, the combined rating for this engine and this vehicle is 24 miles per gallon. We'll do our own fuel economy testing on the Hornet, but 24 miles per gallon, according to the EPA, is quite a bit lower than the about 27 miles per gallon that's average for the class. Also, the engine and transmission, they're just simply not smooth. There's a lot of hesitation off the line, and even when you're up to speed, it can be hesitant to downshift, and overall the experience is just not all that pleasant. Dodge gave the Hornet the latest Uconnect 5 infotainment system, which we like in other cars, but the reality in the Hornet is that the screen is too small. The system is based heavily on scrolling through long lists, but the screen in this car is too short, so it's difficult to navigate these really long lists with such a small area, and then it's difficult to hit the certain targets and buttons on the screen. And there are other areas in this car too that some is good, for instance, these physical climate switches, pretty easy to use. Physical lever style shifters, pretty easy, but then in reality, again, when it's in this position and when I'm driving, it completely blocks my sight and access to the volume roller knob thing that's over here on the dash. Now, these are just first impressions, but in our exclusive road test, this is the level of detail we go into when testing usability, distraction, and overall ease of use of the vehicle while driving. In terms of driving position and seating comfort, the front seat is actually pretty good. I would say it's a high point for the vehicle. But in reality, there are a lot of other fundamental issues with the driving position that we don't see that often and that make this car kind of annoying and difficult to live with. For example, for me being a little bit taller, I pretty much have to choose between my legs being comfortable or my arms being comfortable. Right now, I have the position set so that my arms are where they want, but my legs are a little bit crunched. If I wanna fix my legs and I move the seat all the way back, now my arms are way too far out. There's just not enough adjustment in the steering column. Even when I adjust the seatbelt anchor all the way up, it's just too low and the seatbelt slips off my shoulder. Those are our early impressions of the new Dodge Hornet, and it might be too little too late to the compact crossover segment. Dodge has tried this before with the Journey and the Caliber, and those vehicles weren't that great either, and I'm afraid this is heading down that same path. If you're interested in the Hornet, you might be enticed by the high horsepower numbers, but in reality, the vehicle is full of compromises so far. Everything from driving position to usability and infotainment. Now, this vehicle is also available in a plug-in hybrid version, and we're testing that powertrain in the sister vehicle, the Alfa Romeo Tonali. So if you're interested in that, look up our Alfa Romeo Tonali information on CR.org.
Now, of course, we'll put this vehicle through our full test program of more than 50 different evaluations, everything from cargo, acceleration, braking, and handling. So check back soon on CR.org for the full test results.